So using um, unconformity to de delineate units is known as allostratigraphy. So let's look at allostratigraphy and how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the same succession of facies, but I'll show you first how you can delineate this using lithostratigraphy, and then I'll show you how you can delineate the same succession using allostratigraphy. So let's start with the lithostratigraphic subdivision. So if we look at this succession, the very first lithostratigraphic units that we have is this gravel-rich lithostratigraphic unit X. On top of this, we have a clay-rich package. There's a lot of clay in the su succession, and this is lithostratigraphic unit Y. And notice that lithostratigraphic unit Y changes in thickness throughout the basin. It's very deep where I have this red arrow because multiple units of clays are contained into that one lithostratigraphic unit. But because everything is clay-rich, it's only one lithostratigraphic unit. And we, you already know that this is not necessarily the best way to subdivide the rock record. Now, on top of lithostratigraphic unit Y, we have lithostratigraphic unit Z, which is effectively the shore face, a beach deposit, so a very sandy um, deposit. So using lithostratigraphy, I come up with three units, and you know that these are diachronous units. So how does it work now using allostratigraphy? So subdividing this the same succession using unconformity. So the first unit is, de is uh, defined essentially by the first unconformity that we find, which I mark here in red. So this is my first allostratigraphic unit, which is unit A. Now, very importantly, notice that this allostratigraphic unit, bounded by unconformity, contains more than one lithostratigraphic unit. See that we have lithostratigraphic unit Y and lithostratigraphic unit Z in the same allostratigraphic unit A. That's a very fundamental concept. Then on top of this, we have deposition of this a gravel-rich package, which we will see in this class represents essentially low stand deposit. And this itself is bounded by an unconformity, so that becomes our allostratigraphic unit B. Then on top, we have the position of a clay package, and above the clay package, we have an unconformity, which is essentially a a hard ground and non-deposition, and this counts as a, an unconformity. So we can subdivide this into allostratigraphic unit C. And above this, we have deposition of the next sequence, or allostratigraphic sequence, also bounded by an unconformity, and that's allostratigraphic unit D. And of course, then we have the next unit, which is E. So using allostratigraphy, I come up with five units that are bounded by timelines. So that means that these units are effectively time units, if you want. And they also contain multiple um, lithostratigraphic units, which is a fundamental concept of allostratigraphy. So that really brings us into thinking of the sediments, not just in space, but in space and time. And Harry Willer came up with a very clever way of representing sediments in space and time, which is known as the Willer diagram. So the Willer diagram represents time on a vertical axis instead of the thickness of the sediment. So instead of plotting the thickness, you plot time on a vertical axis. And on the horizontal axis, you still plot the distance between different sections or different wells to be able to represent this spatial distribution of different facies. And because you represent time on a vertical axis, what's really interesting is that you can also represent the absence of sediment, not just when sediments are deposited, but also when sediments are not deposited or are being eroded. So you can represent hiatuses. And you can already understand how this could be important. But moving from allostratigraphy to sequence stratigraphy, you might wonder where the term sequence stratigraphy 
comes from. And really the oldest use of that term is in the 60s by Lawrence Sloss. And in his case, he was referring to the North American Craton. And he defined sequences as essentially six big sequences that are bounded by unconformities on the North American Craton from the Cambrian all the way to the Quaternary. Now, his sequences are actually really large, but they are bounded by unconformity. And this is really the first uh, use of the term sequence that will eventually lead to sequence stratigraphy.